Uh, give all the honor, the glory, and the praises to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, first of all. And I also want to let you know that uh, corporate responsibility has a lot to do with the people in this room. Uh, there is actually uh, a missing component in the African-American community. And statistically, we have three times less entrepreneurs than other ethnic groups. So we have to understand that there's a, a true responsibility and oftentimes people think that the savior uh, of the urban areas, people that are in poverty, people that are hurting right now, you find that in the church, but the truth is, it's right here. You know, you guys are called to do something great. Now, if you're Christian, you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, that's what I know, he died for our sins. But after you receive salvation, then what? What do you do after that? What, what happens after that? Well, it's time for us to save some other folks that are hurting. And I want you to know that as I look in this room, please understand that Detroit leads the nation right now in violent crimes. I was born and raised in Detroit. I was blessed to become a millionaire at the age of 35 in business. I'm, I was blessed to sit down as I was sitting down with, let's give the legendary Herb Strather a hand. He's an empowerer. I hear it in his voice. Sometimes people don't understand our passion. You understand? Because we know that it can be done, but we're like, why isn't anybody doing it? So just, just take you through what I'm about to say. Detroit uh, leads the nation right now. We're ranked by the FBI as the most dangerous city in America. African Americans lead the nation in poverty, statistically unemployment, uh, incarceration and recidivism, meaning you go out of jail and come back into jail. Okay, question is, what are we doing about it? Now, I became a millionaire in business at the age of 35. My business took off. I'm like, praise God, I'm doing great, driving around in Lamborghinis, Rolls Royce Phantoms. But I rolled past my block, and I'm like, man, I thought I was doing something, but my block, not, not my street, my block still looks the same that I grew up in. Hmm. And I said, wait a minute, hold on. It was not enough for me to become a millionaire. It's time for you to become one too. It's time for us to all become millionaire business owners. And you say, well, that's just money. Well, it's not just money, it's empowerment. It's empowerment. It's job creation. When you look at, right now, when you look at statistically, African Americans lead the nation in unemployment, well, we're talking about urban areas. Whenever there's a rise in crime, they check what's called the unemployment index and they find there's a rise in unemployment. So if we were to create jobs, then things would change. But Mark Moriel, the president of the National Urban League, reports that 87% of black-owned businesses make less than $50,000 a year. I don't have a problem with the money. I have a problem with the lack of job creation. Huffington Post recently had an article that said that people that own major corporations tend to hire people that they're comfortable with. What does that translate into? They hire people from their own race. So we keep looking for a savior to come and save uh, the African-American community or urban areas, but I'm here to tell you the savior is the person that you see when you look in the mirror. You're the one that's going to come in and save the day. Are you listening to me? From your business, from your business growing. And be, how many business owners do we have? I am talking to, raise your hand if you're a business owner. All right, all right, I'm talking to you. Now I want to challenge you to see things a different way. I want you to challenge thing. I want to challenge you to raise the bar on your expectations. I want you to look to grow a multi-million-dollar business, or even a billion-dollar business, or a multi-billion-dollar business. And this is not foreign language. The Bible says, "All things are possible to him that believes." Do I have any believers in here? I believe you wouldn't have a business if you didn't. It requires faith to even have a business. You know. So please understand that as you endeavor. Because before I say what I want to say. I want to challenge you to think big. Now that I've done that, understand that there's almost $2 trillion that's been set aside for minority-owned businesses and businesses owned by women of all color. Not billion, trillion dollars. Now I've been blessed to become a supplier for the big three. Come on, somebody say, somebody say something. <laughs> and not only that, but for Walmart and Target and CVS. So understand that you can become a supplier and it's called minority diversity. 
But you have to look at it from a different perspective. You have to look at it from a different perspective. This money has been set aside for you, but it's for you to have a business and they will buy your products. Somebody say products. So I don't care what your product is. Right now, Walmart has over 4 million products. 4 million. Now, Walmart is the largest retailer in the world. They have 11,703 stores. Last year, just in Walmart alone, we had seven people that were accepted by Walmart. Uh, their products were accepted, seven people. This year, it's over 45 people already. Matter of fact, one is sitting back there. Oh, come on, we can clap better than that. How, how, I mean, this is what, the way money is made. At Christmas time, you may go and you go to shop Christmas time and you're putting products in your shopping basket, well, you'll be putting some of our products in the shopping basket, people that own products in this room right here. And I'm talking about across the country and in some cases around the world. This is how money is made. I don't make money every day. I make money every hour. I make money while I'm asleep. But not only that, but I'm telling other people how to do it. For instance, one of the products that, uh, one of the products that we, we, uh, that I personally have are gloves, gloves. And we do the gloves for the big three. But there were other contracts that came through and I've helped other people get their products with the big three. Are you listening to me? So what does that mean? Well, you say, well, I don't really have a product. Well, it's not hard to get the product. People give entrepreneurs a little too much credit. You know, the reason that you heard Mr. Strather uh, he was so emphatic and enthusiastic is because he knows you can do it. He knows you can really do it. The question is, do you know you can do it? Well, it requires mentorship. So where do the products come from? 70, 90% of the products are not made here. They're made in China. The iPhone in my pocket wasn't made here. It's an Apple product, but it was made in China. So your Nike shoes, this outfit that I'm wearing, blue jeans, whatever, it comes from China. So why, what's, what's stopping you from buying products from China Having an LLC, C Corp, S Corp, getting your name on that product, this microphone comes from China, the computer comes from China. What's stopping you from buying products from China, getting your corporate name on those products, they send it here, and then you go through the Minority Supply Diversity Program and get that product in Walmart. That's all we're doing. I just broke it down that quick. I didn't need those two minutes. I'm done. You want the mic? <laughs> but that, but that's, that's how... That's how it works though, and I'm talking about everything. Now you have to look at it from a different perspective because we need more people empowered. I said they have four million products. We need more people empowered. We're talking about jewelry. We're talking about hair weave. We're talking about makeup. We're talking about uh, clothing lines. We're talking about gym shoes, whatever it is. 90% of the time, 70 to 90% of the time it's made in China. So you don't have to speak Mandarin or Cantonese. You don't even have to go over, I've never been to China. Oh my goodness, <laughs> never been to China one time, but I have products in major retail stores across the country and in some cases around the world. Are you listening to me? People buy these products on a regular basis and people try to give me credit, I don't take it because I didn't do anything special. I, I made mistakes and now I teach people for free how to do this and to avoid the mistakes that I've made. So I can tell you how to buy products from China. I can tell you how to avoid the pit holes or whatever. But the question is, will people step up? Will people learn how to do it? Because this is where the products come from. This is where most of the people that are millionaires today, they're suppliers. They're suppliers. This is how Oakland County was built. Some people, like myself, you say, well, I don't know. I don't have a product to sell to GM. Yes, you do. You just buy it from China like everyone else. Yeah, just, just like I do and everyone else. That's, it comes from China. My competition, when I looked at their packaging, it says right on the packaging, made in China. But if you already know that GM sets aside over a billion dollars a year to do business with minorities, you know that Ford Motor Company sets aside over a billion dollars a year to do business with minorities, Kroger and Target, excuse me, Kroger and Walmart, billion dollars, not a million, billion of dollars a year to do business with minorities, why wouldn't you tap into it? Think about that. Why wouldn't we tap into that? And not only minorities, but and women of all color. Hmm, the money's there. 
you know, the business people in here, how many of you all have ready-made money? We have to go get that money, don't we? We have to sell products. We have to encourage buyers. Well, if the buyer is encouraging you to come and sell them products, what are we waiting for is the question. Well, it's time to stop waiting and it's time to step up. And you may say, why? Well, it's not enough for myself to be a millionaire. I was blessed to sit down this, next to another African-American man, and he asked me, the first question he said was, when did you make your first million? I said, that sounds good. I like that, praise God. I like it for two reasons. For one, I can answer that, praise God. It was when I was 35. And, and, I, and the second reason I love it is because I'm being asked by someone that looks like me. Now, I've been asked that question before, but this was the first time I was asked by somebody that looks like me. When I met my mentors, they do $600 million a year. Excuse me, uh, yeah, one of them does $600 million, other does $128 million a year. The one that does $128 million a year, the first question they asked me was the same question. You know, how much money do you make, or where did you make your first million, this and that? And we had a money conversation. And I want you to get used to that because I'm going to be able to ask you that in this room. When did you make your first million? Oh, your first 10 million? Oh, your first 100 million? That's, and then, because the Bible says if one can send 1,000 to flight, two can send 10,000 to flight. All we have to do is create the jobs, folks. Yeah, you're going to need a warehouse. When Walmart places an order, you need a warehouse. You're going to have to hire people. You're going to need people to, to do stock work. You're going to need all kinds of, you're going to need for a basic Walmart or your order, you're going to need at least 50 employees. A lot of people don't know that. You're going to need 50 employees because pretty much I think the lowest number that I saw was about 400,000 units. We're talking about corporate buyers right now. We're not talking about local buyers, to corporate buyers. If you go to Walmart's Facebook page right now, you'll see a group of people that are being congratulated by Walmart just happened last Friday. They're being congratulated. 100% of the people that are congratulated that uh, had their products accepted by Walmart, all of them came from Global Empowerment. And they learned it for free. Are you listening to me? The door is open right now. I said the door is... Huh? Sure, sure. Um, you can come on to Focus Hope. We meet at Focus Hope at 11 o'clock and 1.30 at Focus Hope. And... Before I close, I want to, you can, on Sundays, 11 o'clock and 1.30, have a radio show that comes on, 102.7 Praise, from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Uh, you can listen to that uh, every Sunday. And like I said, Focus Hope, 11 o'clock and 1.30. I want, want to say one more thing. Uh, once we're empowered, all of us are empowered, and it's enough for everybody to succeed. I don't care if you have a nonprofit, whatever it is. Uh, it's time out for us looking for grant money. Grant money is a blessing, praise God, but we want to give the grants. You understand? I want to be a blessing to give grants to others uh, because your business is so successful. The Bill and Melinda Gates, they're the biggest philanthropist in the world. But where does the money come from? It comes from Microsoft. Business. Their own business. And then it comes from other areas beyond that, but it started with that. So please understand, I want you to have your first money tree, which is a product that you're selling in Walmart or Target. All of them have minority spot diversity programs, and it's time to tap into that, and they're looking for you. All right. So if anyone needs any information, you can see me uh, before you leave. But like I said, show up Sunday, uh, 11 o'clock and 1.30, Focus Hope. It's a Christian organization, but we teach business because that's the way we're going to bring change and literally, literally uh, eradicate police brutality uh, by putting people in office with our money, not our votes, our money. You understand? Eradicate eradicate the crime issue and things of that nature. We're going to do all of that through empowerment and creating not small businesses, but big businesses. God bless you. Thank you.